still got behind me. It's fine, it's close, it's fine. Good evening. God bless you. We're delighted to be here this evening. We thank God for this another chance uh, to come to you for our virtual Bible study. I'm W.R. Ricks of First Missionary Baptist Church in Lufkin, Texas. And uh, we're so glad that you took the time out uh, to join in with us. We welcome all this with us on Zoom as well as all of you who have joined in with us on uh, Facebook Live. I uh, pray, trust, and hoping that you all had a uh, wonderful day today and that all is well with you. Want to remind us that it's getting close to uh, uh, time to vote, midterm elections. Uh, uh, so we certainly want to encourage you if you have not uh, yet registered to vote. I think you still have time. The last day to register to vote is October the 11th. And so we would that you would uh, be mindful of that if you're not registered to vote. Uh, on October the 6th, uh, here at the Brandon Park Community Center in Lufkin, uh, there will be a, uh, a special uh, voter registration, early voting information guidelines for mail-in ballots, sample ballots, polling, polling location information. Uh, that's gonna be uh, information be given on uh, October the 6th, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Brandon Park Community Center here in the city of Lufkin. So we would that you would be governed by this announcement. And you'll be hearing more and more about this. Plus, there'll be flyers out of uh, all that will be done to uh, promote uh, and encourage people to, to go and be registered, be ready uh, to vote when that time comes. Um, so we would that we be mindful of that. Also, I want to mention that we do have some people on the prayer list that we will mention. Uh, we certainly want to pray for, and I'll mention them at the end of uh, Bible study. Uh, but if there be any of you on Facebook who would like to submit some names uh, to our prayer list, uh, we'll be glad to call them um, uh, at the prayer time 
uh, this evening uh, after Bible study. We'll call their names and we will uh, go to God in prayer on their behalf. And certainly we want everybody that's uh, with us virtually uh, to pray along with us for those people whose names we will mention. All right. Uh, God bless you. And we're going to get ready now for our uh, Bible study. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time that you've given to us to come together on this wise for Bible study. We thank you for the tools. We thank you, oh God, for the technology. We thank you for the access that we have to uh, do this Bible study virtually. I praise you and I thank you for the ways you made. Thank you for the people who have joined in and who have taken time out to be a part of our Bible study, Lord. It could have been just two or three, but you fixed it where there are as many as there are. And I thank you for them. I don't take it for granted, and I give you praise. And now we ask you, Lord, that you will open our understanding, that we may understand the scriptures. Bless us through the power of your word. Speak to our hearts, we pray. Oh, God, we pray that you will help us to hear your word, help us to Heed your word in Jesus' name. And I thank you and I give you praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. God bless you. All right, this evening, uh, I'm going to the book of Colossians, the New Testament book of Colossians, chapter 4. I'm reading verses 5 and 6. The book of Colossians, the New Testament book of Colossians, chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Now, uh, there's going to be a connection here. Um, you know, uh, the last few lessons we've had has been about the tongue, remember? From the book of James, all right? We, we talked about how the tongue is a problem uh, uh, for all of us. We have, to, we have to watch what we say, you know what I'm saying? And... Uh, uh, because we know we can't tame the tongue ourselves, but God can help us with that. Uh, because what man can't do, God can. Amen. And uh, and so, uh, but in this passage, now uh, you know since since we we found out what the tongue is and what it's full of, we need something else to help us with this tongue. Okay. And so we're going to look at verses 5 and 6 of Colossians uh, chapter 4. And, um, and, and, and we're going to read this and just say a little bit about these two verses, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, um, verses 5 and 6 of Colossians 4. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Amen. If I had to use a, a subject, I want to use grace in your speech. Grace. In your speech, grace in our speech, grace in my speech. We need grace in our speech. Amen. Amen. This Paul gives some some instructions to the believers at at Colossae, and uh, uh, he shared many things with them. And in this verse here, uh, uh, he, he 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 wants them to know that. Uh, since we are in Christ, we ought to reflect Christ. Uh, Christ ought to be seen in every aspect of our lives, okay? Um, uh, and, and particularly in our witness, you know, with, with the words that we, that we utter. Um, it ought to reflect our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, there are, there are three things I want to mentioned from these two verses and then I want to get into that grace in our speech. First of all, uh, he, he gives us instructions concerning our walk. He instructs us concerning our walk. 
Listen, as believers in Christ, we need to be taught how to walk. We need to be reminded how to walk. Okay? And so he tells us in this verse to walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Another translation is those who are outside. As believers, we got to be careful how we walk before sinners, before people who are unsaved. Okay? We got to be mindful of our walk. Uh, 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 we, he said, walk in wisdom. Uh, be mindful of our conduct, uh, even around the unsaved. Uh, uh, we need to be mindful concerning our, our walk. Uh, a lot of times people get caught up in their gifts and their talents and their abilities and, uh, and and they 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 feel like that that brings automatically with them a kind of elevation um, uh, in the eyes of God. It, it 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 really brings them higher spiritually because of their gifts and their talents. But the Bible teaches us that our walk with God is what brings us closer. Amen. What good is it? Listen, you you can't, your talents and your ability cannot outshine your life. Your life that you live. Listen, even as a preacher, I can't live in and every kind of way and preach over my life. I can't do that. My walk is important. How I live on a daily basis, what I do, how I treat people, how I act, I walk. Listen, they hear I talk in the church house, but they see I walk after church is over. And so it's important that we as believers walk in wisdom. That's what the Bible says. Walk in wisdom. We've got to be mindful how we conduct ourselves where we go, what we do. Listen, it's important, it is very important that I know how to act at a football game, even if I don't agree with a call on the field. Amen. I can't, I can't act out of order. I must remember who I am and who I represent and what I believe and whom I believe. And remember who, who, who's around me? Okay? I want to always be a good example before everybody and especially before people who don't know Christ. Walk in, the verse said, walk in wisdom. Uh, walk in such a way that you won't make trouble for yourself by doing something foolishly. Walk in wisdom. So he instructs us Concerning our walk. Secondly, it's imperative that there be no waste. That's my second point. It's imperative that there be no waste. Look at the verse. The verse says, redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. We don't have no time to waste. Amen. Amen. We've got to use our time wisely. Amen. Don't don't waste our time on trivial things and 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 when the important things are beckoning to us. You know, sometimes we we make the mistake uh of of of, of making a, a mountain out of a molehill. We we sometimes we we major in minors and we minor in majors. Listen, we we waste time sometimes with foolishness. He lets us know, look, we don't have no time to waste. Christ is coming back again. You know, time is winding up. So we need to make good use of the time. And especially in being a witness to sinners. Amen. It's imperative that we do all we can to reach the unsaved. 
Amen. Do everything we can to be a witness, to tell them about Christ, give them an opportunity to get to know him and be saved. Amen. So it's imperative uh, that there be no waste. And in this instance, no waste of time. But then thirdly, uh, the third point is inspiration in our words. This is what I want to get to. Inspiration in our words. Amen. In the book of Job, he tells us that 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 uh, the inspiration comes from the almighty. God inspires us. Listen, the Bible is the inspired word of God. The Bible says uh, uh, all scripture. Am I right? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Hey, listen, the Bible is the God breathe word. Amen. It is the inspired word of God. And so he tells us in this verse, let your speech be always with grace. Season with salt that you may know how you ought to answer Every man. Amen. Let your speech be be graceful. Uh, uh, there ought to be some, some sweetness in our speech. There ought to be some seasoning in our speech. There ought to be some spirit in our speech. Amen. Uh, grace. Season. Our speech should be seasoned. Listen. At some point in our Christian growth, we've got to move from immaturity to maturity. All right? And the more we grow in Christ, the more we walk with God, the more seasoned we will become. Amen. The seasoning will be made evident even in our conversations. There ought to be some grace in our speech. Amen. He said, let yours. Did y'all see that? Let your speech. You know, a lot of times we talk about what somebody else shouldn't have said, what somebody else needs to say. What about yours? What about your speech? What about your conversation? It's important that I examine mine. You examine yours. That's why we need to hear the teaching and preaching of God's word because it helps us to see ourselves. The Bible says in the book of James that, that the word of God is a mirror. You, you Listen, the one somebody you ought to see clearly when you look in the mirror is yourself. You ought to be able to see you, see where you are spiritually when it comes to your life. So he said, let your speech be always, not every now and then, but always consistently. <laughs> not just on Sunday. Not just when you're at the church house. But always. Even at the family reunion. Always. Even at the football game. Always. Now listen. This don't mean that every time you open your mouth... You got to say hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. No, 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 no. That's not what that, that's not what that's saying. You know, because sometimes, sometimes you can you can wear folk out. You know, sometimes, sometimes we overdo it. We can we can overdo it. Every every word out of our mouth is a hallelujah and all no 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 no. We don't have to do that. No. No, no, no. As a Christian. Listen, as a, as a child of God, as a believer, we can talk about football and we can talk about it gracefully. Amen. You can even, you can even bring up the law in it. You understand what I'm saying? Well, let there be grace, all right? So he says, let there be grace in our speech so that we'll know how we ought to answer everybody, how we ought to talk to people, how we ought to respond to folk. It's important that we know how to talk to people. Listen, you'd be surprised 
what we can get people to do if we just know how to talk to them. Amen. You'd be surprised who will listen if we just know how to talk to a person. All right. So now, since he says, let your speech be all way with grace, season with salt. So the question comes, in what ways am I, is my speech to be with grace? How can I know if my speech is with grace, seasoned with salt? Now, you know, salt is, 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 is something that adds taste, something uh, that's used to preserve. Okay, that's just some of the characteristics of salt. So he said, seasoned with salt. So how can you know that your your speech is is grace speech and seasoned with salt? Well, let me mention just a few things here that I found in scripture that will help us. First of all, grace in your speech is sensible speech. It's sensible. We don't talk crazy. <laughs> we don't. We don't talk nonsense. See, grace in your speech means we don't talk crazy talk, nonsense talk. Amen. That's what that has reference to. It's, it's what Paul said to Timothy, rather to Titus in Titus chapter 2, verse 8. I want to read that. Titus chapter 2, verse 8. Listen to what he says to, to him. Uh, I want to begin, let me take my time, begin at verse 1, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, and charity and patience, that the aged women likewise, uh, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Boy, I sure hate to rush through that. Did y'all hear all of that? Did y'all read that? That's, boy, I hate to rush through that. Uh, let me read on. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. Verse 7, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, Sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned that he that loves the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. They will say something bad about me if I talk a lot of crazy talk. If there's grace in your speech, we don't talk crazy talk. We don't talk nonsense. And we talk sensibly. Sensibly. Sensibly, we talk like Christians should talk. You don't hear us. We we have no business saying, "Let them do it again." I'm a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna I'm gonna look here. I ain't forgot how to cuss. Now that that's that's that that don't make sense for Christian. Look, you know that that that's don't make sense. We got to remember grace in our speech. You know, some people say, "Well, look." You know, they push me too far. I lay my religion down. That's not grace. Remember, we we can't we can't talk we can't we got to talk sensibly. We if you're a Christian, we've got to talk sensible talk. It's, it's, it's talk with good sense. With good sense. Okay? There's a lot of nonsense in this world. A lot of nonsense going. We got to talk with sense. I hope y'all can hear this. The sensible talk. But not only that. Sincere speech. Sincere speech. When I say sincere speech. I mean from a heart. From the heart. Speech from the heart. I got a scripture I want to bring up. Matthew the 15th chapter verses 7 and 8. Jesus said to those scribes and Pharisees. You hypocrites. Let me go to that verse. I want to read it just right. I don't want to read it. Just, it's Matthew 15 chapter and verses 7 and 8. All right. Now, he was, he was, 
he was talking to these scribes and Pharisees because they was complaining because the disciples sat down at the table and hadn't washed their hands. He said, you, you hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, verse 8, here it is, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. See, so they were not real. They talked good talk, but their heart wasn't in it. Okay? So, 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 sincere speech means it's from the heart. Say what, what you're going to say from your heart. Don't, don't be lying. Be real. Speak from your heart. Amen. That's grace speech. You speak from your heart. Be real about it. Even when it comes to your worship, you ought to be real about what you're saying. That is from your heart. And let me tell you something. When a person is speaking from their heart, you can tell it. Amen. Sincere speech. Sincere speech. It's different from just quoting what somebody else said. You can tell when it's, when it's from your heart. From your heart. Amen. Sincere speech. Sincere speech is, is the kind of speech that Jacob had when he woke up out of his dream. He said, surely the Lord is in this place. Amen. That's sincere speech. Sincere speech. When, 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 when that jailer came and went to Paul's side, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, believe. On the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. That was sincere speech. Amen. Be real. Speak from your heart. Don't just. Don't. 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 Don't just. Just speak flattering words. Just. You know. To sound good. To, to pacify. Speak. Speak from your heart. Speak from your heart. Grace speech. Is sincere speech. That's not all I see. It's also soft speech. Now, when I use the word soft, I get it from the book of Proverbs, the 15th chapter, verse 1. The Bible says in that verse, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Another translation for the word soft in, in Proverbs 15 and 1 is gentle words. Grace speech is gentle words. It's, 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 it's not being argumentative, fussing, you know, arguing back and forth. That's not grace speech. Are you listening to me? Lord help us. That's not, that's not grace speech when you when you're fussing and raising your voice and, and calling uh, each other names or talking loud, saying something you ain't got no business, that's not, you know, especially when you, when you get into a disagreement. It is very important. It's imperative that we know, listen to me, listen to me. It's important that we know how to talk in a disagreement. Are y'all listening to me? Because the Bible says it's a soft as a bar. Look, we needed this, didn't we? we? It's important that I know that you know how to talk even during a disagreement. Because if you don't watch it, you'll raise your voice a little higher than you should. You'll end up saying something. You have no business saying when you get upset, you know, a soft answer, a gentle answer turns away wrath. But grievous words stir it up even more. Okay, so 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 somebody's got to speak sensibly. Amen. So somebody got to got to keep things under control. That's the word I want to use right there. When you say a soft answer is it's, it's controlled. It's controlled speech. 
this control. You know, listen. Oh, Lord, help us. No child of God should ever say, well, I just couldn't help myself. I took all I could take it. I just, I just said what I had to. I couldn't help it. That, that, sh these, I'm going to say it like, like, like Jay. These things ought not so to be. Because one of the actions of the fruit of the spirit is self-control. God, when there's grace in your speech, we can control our tongue. We can, we can control our temper. We can control what we say. <sighs> grace, gentle, soft, Grace in your speech means you know how to talk to folk even when you have a disagreement. Oh, have mercy. That's that's something, isn't it? All right, softly. But then, but then grace in your speech is spirit-led speech. Spirit-led speech. I want to go over here to uh uh the book of of of, of Acts uh over here. In Acts chapter uh, 4, I want, want to look at Acts chapter 4. Now, Peter was being questioned in Acts chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Uh, the, the religious leaders would agree that Peter and John had been preaching in the temple. And so they, they had them arrested. And the next day they brought them out and they questioned them, saying, by what power and by what name have you done this? Verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Now, my whole point is, he was speaking under the influence of the Holy Spirit. It ain't always been this way. Listen. Just a few chapters back, a few books back, Peter said some stuff that was not under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Anybody ever been there? You know, but at some point, as a child of God, you'll grow and you get better. And you learn to let the Holy Spirit, we let, we yield to the Holy Spirit. And let him guide us in what to say. Spiritly. It's a good, it's a good practice. It's a good practice. It's a good practice. Lord, give me what to say. Look, don't just wait and pray that prayer if you own to do a welcome in church or you own to, to, to say something about the Sunday school. That ain't the only time you ought to ask. What about daily? Lord, give me what to say. Don't, Lord, help me. Don't let me say something I should I don't want to say something I shouldn't say. Lord, would you please guide me? Guide me in what to say. Holy Spirit, lead me. Give me what to say. When the, when the last time you asked the Holy Spirit to guide you in what to say? Spirit-led speech. Soothing speech. Proverbs 15, 23. I'm almost through. Proverbs 15 and 23. Proverbs 15 and 23. Soothing speech. When I look at 15 chapters of the book of Proverbs, I'm going to look at verse 23. This is what the verse says. A man had joy by the answer of his mouth. Listen, you can tell if a person got the joy of the Lord by the way they talk. All right. Okay. Now, I guess this could be too. This could be sometimes there ought to be some shouting speech. <laughs> God, there ought to be some joy in your speech. There ought to be some joy in it. All right. But then, and a word spoken in due season, how good is it? A timely word, an encouraging word. 
Listen, as believers in Christ, we ought to have encouraging words to share, not condemning, not criticizing, but, but encouraging words to encourage people, soothing speech, you know, something that the person needs to hear that will encourage them. Don't give up. Hang on in there. You know, uh, well, I don't know what to do. You know, well, listen, have you ever thought about, about, about going to God in prayer? Well, I don't know God. Well, I love to, 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 to lead you to him in prayer. You know, let me tell you something about him. You know, soothing. Some, something, if we say the right thing, if we let the Holy Spirit lead us, God will give us what to say. And listen. The more we study God's word, the more we have for the Holy Spirit to work with. Because Jesus said something. He said, he said, he said, and the comforter, one of the things he's going to do, he's going to bring to your remembrance the things that Jesus had already said. And so the more word we get in us, the more we give the Holy Spirit something to work with. He can help us with it. We, he can help us to apply it. He helps us to get more understanding of his word so we can know how to apply it. Soothing speech. But then I'm almost through. Stable speech. Stable speech. What do I mean by stable speech? You know you got grace in your speech when you're not double-tongued. You know, you're not fickle in what you say. You're not, you say it, say this, one way, and then you come back and you talk totally different. No, no, no. That's that's not grace in your speech. Grace in your speech, you, you say the same thing and you stand on it. Amen. 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 Stable speech. Stable. Listen. If you're going to say Hosanna, you keep saying Hosanna. Don't do like the folk did in, in Scripture. They said Hosanna. When he, when he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. But them same folks who said, Hosanna, turned around and said, crucify him. You see, you can't be back and forth. You can't be fickle like that. If there's grace in your speech, you speak what you believe and you stand on it. Don't be switching. Don't be back and forth. And so, so, uh, that's stable speech. But then stern, stern speech, stern speech uh, means to, to speak to where we can rebuke evil or correct somebody or correct something. Stern. Listen, what I want to say about this is grace in your speech means that we can say something in such a way where people know we're serious. We're serious. It's all right to have fun, to laugh with people, but listen, there ought to come a time when people know that you are serious. When people know that you're serious, okay? Uh, we, listen, my mother sometime would play, go look out there and see. Would, would go and play, you can look out there and see. Uh, my mother sometime would play, we would laugh and talk. But listen, I knew when she was serious. Okay? And so there ought to be some sternness in our speech. Well, I'm going to stop right there. Jesus teaches us. The Lord in his word helps us to understand that there ought to be some grace in our speech. He giveth us grace. This grace that he has given us ought to show in our speech. I want to read one more scripture and I'm going to close. Luke chapter 4 and I'm reading there verse 22. Luke chapter 4 verse 22. Listen to what it says. And all bear him witness and wonder that the gracious, look at, at the gracious words 
which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? The words that he spoke were gracious words. Gracious words. And so the Lord gives us grace. He gives us grace. Even in our speech. Our speech can be seasoned with grace. Our speech, listen, our speech should be simple where people can understand what we're saying. Be careful what we're saying. Let there be grace in our speech that we may be a blessing to others, that God will use us to his glory, that we can please God even with our speech. Father God, thank you for your word. We give you praise. Help us to be better. Help us to do better. Help us to talk better. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Whew. All right. If there be any on Zoom that would like to have a few comments, you are welcome to unmute yourself and do so at this time. Brother Mims, I hey, see you. How you doing? I'm hanging in here. Good. Good. Yes, Sister Harris, I'm, I'm going to let her go first. All right. Okay. All right, Brother Mims, thank you. <laughs> I didn't have much to say, so I'm trying to be quiet. <laughs> I appreciate these blessings because they do help me uh, in a, to, to, to think about when I'm saying things. I mean... I was thinking about when you first opened up the lesson tonight, speech is such a, I mean, no other created being mm. down here on earth has speech. Mm. We have speech. That's it. Uh, and, and God trusted us, I guess, with speaking. I wonder sometimes if he didn't feel, repent about it and say, I, maybe y'all should have been barking. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Boy, I tell you, you got to understand how, how this, I said, Lord, this one, this one, you want me to cheat this one? And I had to. I said, Lord, I, I, I got to grow in some areas. I want you to teach it. And so I needed it. I needed it. Brother Mills. Yeah, remember, you know, you, you were right about whenever you were talking about how we uh, get up in church and if we go say something or speak in church and we'll say, um, you know, Lord, guide my tongue, that, you know, that I'll say things right, that something is pleasing in your sight. That's, we do that in church. But then when we are out of church on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we don't be saying nothing like that. You know, we, 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 we forget all about that. But that, but like you say, this is something that we need to say every day. Whenever we get up in the morning, that that ought to be my prayer. Something that's included in your prayer, you know, Lord, guide my tongue today. Yes, yes. And, and let me just say things that's pleasing in your sight. That's right, that's and, right. And, you know, not for any form or fashion, but just to please him. That's it. And, and you know, and, and that's, uh, I know sometimes it's hard to do when, when we run into some difficult people or whatever, but that's why we ask him Cause you know we can't we can't handle it. We that's can't right. do it. That's right. No way we can, and, and right. that we need Him to to guide it because it, it, it's so easy to just let something blurt out. That and when it, just like I said, if you when you write something or say something, it's thought out. You can't you can't go back and take it back. No, you know? no. Uh, you say something hurtful, and you, you know I apologize, but you you know that's already done hurt that person. So. Uh, like I say, that that tongue and yes, and our speech is is just something that I know I have I have a 
problem with that sometimes of how you say things, you know, that, that, that uh, you might not think is, is uh, hurtful or, or rude or whatever. Right, but, right. You know, the person you're speaking to feel feel that, that uh, feeling that's coming from you by the way you're speaking. So, you know, and then God is actually like God's the only one that can uh, can control it and, and teach us. And we just need every day to ask right. him to guide our speech that, that we'll do things please in sight not to I try to be hurtful to anyone. That's right. That we, uh, you know, we come in contact during the course of our time. That's right. Amen. That's right, Brother Mim. You're so right. You're so right. You're so right. Yes, sir. Boy, but I tell you, it's lessons like this, man, that just help you check yourself. <laughs> I tell you. Yeah. You know, yes. this word, just, just this word right here helps helps us because a lot of time, you know, a lot of time we, we try to come up with excuses. You know, excuses for, for saying something we have no been to say. You know, but but see, God has given us everything we need. We just gotta do our part to get to it. And let his grace take over in our lives. Let's submit to him. Let's ask his, his help, his Holy Spirit to help us with this. And we can do better. You know, and that's, that's this lesson helped me. This lesson yeah, helped me. You know, Reverend Richard, just like I was just thinking about Job's three friends. With, with their speech to him when he was down. And, and that tone that wasn't. It was no song in the in the uh, tone when they were talking to him. You know that that's why we people always say that from that make you say, you know, with uh, friends like that, you don't need no enemies. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, of, of the way their tone of talk was to him, you know, blaming him for what had happened to him and all that there, you know. So, but they 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 weren't, uh, <laughs> you know, like I say. Friends don't talk to friends like that. That's right. Boy. That's right. You know what? And God told him, said, if you don't repent, I'm going to get you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he, he said, you go to Job. Job going to pray for you. Say, say, he calls, you have not spoken right concerning me, nor my servant Job. Mm -hmm. Their speech got him in trouble. Yeah. yeah. And and what bothers me, you know, well, I ain't going to say bothers me, but what, what fascinates me is, when the story ended, they were still his friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the person said, his friends. See, friends sometimes can come off wrong. It's, sometimes it's your friends. Your friends can say stuff to hurt your feelings. It don't mean they're your enemies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's another lesson for another time. All right? <laughs> Bless you, Brother Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? All right. Bless you. Okay. Uh, I want to look at our prayer list uh, for this evening. Um, let's, let's pray for Hope and Johnny Ellis, Chris and Cam Robin, Kelvin Robin and family. Golden Coleman, okay, Sister Golden Coleman had surgical procedure that went well today. She is to be discharged tomorrow. Amen. All right, we're going to pray for Sister Golden Coleman. Amen. Also, Brother Lisa Mims, Sister Cheryl Murray. We also want to pray for Brother Brent Jackson. Uh, Brother Brent Jackson, let's pray for him. Uh, he's dealing with sickness, and so let's lift him up in prayer. Also, Brother George Richard. Uh, uh, Brother George Richard, I had gotten a call yesterday and uh, we went in prayer on his behalf, but I got a call today that he is doing much better. And so uh, we thank God for that and we want to keep praying for him, lifting him up in prayer. George, if you're watching, man, we're praying for you. Also want to pray for Perry Durst. Uh, this is the grandson of Sister Bobby Edwards, also her sister, Sister Janet Edwards. We want to pray for her. We also want to pray for Brother Raymond Nelson. Amen. Brother Nelson, we want to lift him up in prayer. Also, we want to pray for nursing home residents. Uh, uh, you know, sometime every now and then you hear about 
uh, uh, people in the nursing home uh, got COVID and so forth. Sometimes employees got COVID. Uh, let's pray for these people. Let's pray for nursing home residents and employees. Let's pray. Let's lift them up uh, in prayer. Amen. Uh, also, let's pray for Sister Shirley White, Sister Betty Alexander. Let's remember Sister Mary Thomas and family. Sister Mary Thomas' uh, sister had a sister. She had a sister that passed away. Uh, Ms. Resno, and so uh, we want to pray for Sister Mary Thomas and family uh, in the loss of her sister, and we want to lift them up uh, in prayer. I was glad to hear uh, Sister Mary Jones' mother uh, is doing fine, and so we're glad to hear that, uh, and so we want to keep lifting her up in prayer as well. And listen, uh, there are families that's going through, let's remember the people in, in Florida, Look, man, we're, we're just looking at some of the pictures of of the damage done. And I think the last time I know, uh, uh, Sunday, I mentioned it's 45. I think it's over 100 now. I don't know what the last kind of, but it was all, it's already over 100. And uh, 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 many lost their lives and uh, much damage done. And, and, and so let's pray for the people in Florida and other areas. Uh, I don't know about... Some of the other states where the hurricane went through, uh, but uh, let's pray for these people everywhere uh, that God will help them. God will comfort them. God will strengthen them and keep them. And and there are those who got to start all over again um, who are displaced. Let's pray for them uh, because God can be a shelter in the time of a storm, even after the storm. After the storm, he can be a shelter before the storm, a shelter in the storm, but he can be a shelter after the storm. Mm -hmm. And so let's lift them up in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you now for this privilege to come before you in prayer. Lord, I pray for each and every one whose names that we have called out. I ask of thee, we ask you, Lord, that you'll look and hear our prayer. Oh God, you know who they are. Oh, God, we pray that you'll bless them. Some dealing with sickness, some are bereaved, some, oh, God, are having other problems. But whatever it is, you know, and, Lord, there's nothing, there is nothing too hard for you. We pray in Jesus' name. Some, oh, God, the doctors have said they've done all they can do. But, Lord, we know when the doctors say no, you can say yes. When the doctors say I can't, we know you can. And we pray, oh, God, that you'll intervene Oh, God, that you'll step into the picture in Jesus' name. We pray for those people in Florida, those who lost their loved ones. We pray for comfort and strength to them. Lord, I saw pictures of some sitting down crying in the aftermath of what has happened. I pray for them and their families that you'll help them, oh, God. Oh, God, we know that you have a way of coming through to help us to rebuild. You have a way of picking us up when we're down. Sometimes, even when we're at our lowest point, you show yourself strong and mighty by coming through and lifting us up in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we pray for Brent Jackson and others who are in the hospital. We pray for some that's at home. We pray for Brother Nelson. Look on him in the midst of all he's going through in his, in his health. I pray for him. I pray for his family. Lord God, we pray for those who are having difficulties, whatever they may be. Lord, some got back trouble. Some, oh Lord, got problems in their relationships. Whatever the need is, you told us to call on your name. And then, Lord, help us, help us, please. Help us that we may have more grace in our speech. Help us to know how to answer, how to respond, what to say, when to say it, and how to say it, oh God. Help us in Jesus' name. We pray for Sister Coleman. Thank you for blessing her to come through the procedure. And we pray, oh God, that you'll bless her to have a successful recovery in Jesus' name. We pray for brother others that's, that we have asked us to pray for them. Lord, some who, who mentioned, uh, pray for me. And Lord, even though if I don't call their names, I pray for them anyway. I pray, thank you for blessing brother George Richard to get better and you're able to bless him to make a full recovery if you will, in Jesus' name. Lord God, we pray that you'll please have your way. Please, Lord. And we'll be so careful to give you the glory. We'll be so careful to give your name the praise. We bless your name. We thank you. We magnify you. Now, Lord, I pray for churches 
I pray for churches, oh God, that's trying to recover, that's trying to rebuild, going through something that's amid turmoil. I pray, I pray on their behalf, Lord, that you'll please help them in Jesus' name. Oh God, we know you can bring beauty out of ashes. We know, oh God, you can give the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We pray that you'll help them and that you'll get the praise and glory to it all. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. And all the people said, amen. God bless you. And may God keep you is our prayer. All right. We're going to close out. This is the longest I've held you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all the people said, amen. Bless y'all. Thank you. God bless you.